Okay, so this book lab is about geocomputation with R that have been written by Robin Hoffless, Jakub Nowosad, and Jens Munchen. Uh, as you may know, the first edition have been in press and now uh, they are working on the second edition. Uh, and uh, we're gonna read the chapter and discuss it together. The website is um, hosted by the Air for Data Science Learning Communities. Uh, if we go here, let me like increase the size. So uh, I think this is this one, I never know. So everyone can read maybe. Uh, so if you go here, we'll go directly into the GitHub repo. Uh, as you may see, I have submit a quick pull request with the first chapters and the notes. Um, like uh, they are pending the review, like uh, they need to be approved um, by John and then the, it will be merged and it will be available to everyone. Um, what can I say more? So uh, if I go, I mean, probably discuss that later. <clears throat> so what the principle of the book club uh, is like every week, a uh, volunteer uh, will present a chapter from the book. Or a part of the chapter. It will depend on some big chapter. We can decide a bit, um, like to split it as you want or as we want. Or if we cannot do everything in one hour, so we can. Or if we have like an ongoing conversation that we want to follow, we can definitely take more week on one chapters. I still think good. Like this is my fourth book club. I think uh, I still think it's good to keep the flow going, so we complete it. One of the difficulty of doing stuff online is uh, people can drop off because life matter, you know, and online matter less than real, and I, some obligation you may have. Uh, so that's why like keeping uh, a good flow is important. Uh, yeah, more information about how to, um, so how, how can we present today, like the first chapters and the introduction is more like uh, basic, I will say. But after, uh, feel free to, as long as we review the chapters, you can bring uh, like, a pre, like you can, it can be like more testing stuff, uh, running through the exercise. It doesn't need to be like a full presentation that I will do now. And we'll, uh, I will try to jump back from the, uh, an ID and to the, um, to the presentation. Did you have a question? Sorry. Can't hear you well. You want to say something? Sorry. Oh, apparently it's good. Feel free to interrupt me. Okay. Um, so if we go, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with GitHub and uh, Markdown, I uh, Markdown and um, Git and GitHub. If you are not familiar with it, uh, if you go to the readme of the repo, you have like an introduction on how you can uh, submit pull requests and how it works. Mm, I do not follow <laughs> this workflow. I use the I do not use the GitHub um, token uh, on my personal account. So um, so I use just the command line. It works fine. So as long as you submit the pull request, you're good. Like, but if you are beginners, I highly encourage you to follow this workflow. It's really well made uh, for like the beginners. If you have trouble uh, with this workflow or question, feel free to ask them in the chat uh, in the Slack, and uh, we'll figure out how to solve it. Um, so that's it. Mm. As you see, currently, like it's built on my computers. Uh, and not in the website because the pull requests have not been uh, merged. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's go back to uh, this. Ah, I went on the book, where is it? It was this one. Let's go back to the book. I lost it. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, the pace, I already bring that. Uh, uh, like I will reiterate, uh, oh yeah, we will do a break in two weeks. So we are going to meet every week on Monday at the same hours. 
we're gonna do a break uh, in two weeks because in two weeks, uh, a lot of country will change hours uh, for daylight savings. And usually they do not coordinate themselves. So for experience in the book lab, this is the mess on bus, uh, on bus every time that uh, hours are changing. So it's really a book club break. So we'll go next week with chapter two, and then uh, we'll have two weeks of break, and then we'll go to chapter three. Uh, I, will, I will insist on that learning online is difficult. Sometimes we do not understand everything. Uh, my, one of my last book club was about uh, INLA, uh, since um, uh, it's a statistical uh, way of doing uh, approximation on Markov chain Monte Carlo. It was hard. We did not understand everything, but so it's, it's still a first step uh, to progress. And so be kind with uh, yourself and the others that are trying. And yeah, follow the flow. Even if you do not understand or some part seems less interesting, I assure you like going through the whole book club, ending the book uh, is a good achievement and uh, something worth it. Okay. Uh, let's do a quick round of introduction. So it's up by myself. As you hear with my accent, I'm French, but I'm living in the US. I work as a data engineer, but by uh, training, I'm a um, geographer. Uh, I'm joining from Ohio here, close to Cleveland. And uh, my goal while reading this book is uh, uh, like, I have already read the first version. I want to go uh, inside of it with and exchanging with people. Uh, and uh, like the word question I had, like is, which is a topological question, but also a fun one. I think a straw have just one hole. So if I know like, I can design with, also, also I'm not like, uh, there's like plenty of debate about that. It's just like, uh, it have relevant matters uh, on GIS and geocomputation, but you're just like to, to chill a bit. This question is not very important. So who want to go uh, next or should I design someone? I will stop sharing so I can see and read. Okay, I will. I'll I will. Go. Um, my name's Ken. I'm in Northampton, Massachusetts, Western Massachusetts. Um, retired uh, last year as a, after many many years working as a software developer. I've done a lot of. Um, sort of hobby projects, civic data projects using geographic data, mostly vector data and leaflet maps. And I'm interested in the book to um, sort of rub, round out my GIS knowledge, especially I'm very weak with working with rasters and I'd like to learn more about that. Um, so looking forward to reading the book with you. I will design someone. <laughs> okay. So Jonathan, and if I pronounce badly your name, like please correct me. Oh hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Slorsano. Uh, I'm a PhD student in Morelia, Mexico, and I well, I work mostly with remote sensing to study forests, and I kind of read the last version of the book, not complete, but uh, I don't know, my interest here is to <laughs> read it complete at, at least one time and get to know like the new things that this new version has. Okay, I can go. Um, my name is Ryan Spute. I live near Houston, Texas in the United States, and I work in the, uh, the freight logistics industry. Um, and in the past, I've used a little R a little bit for data cleansing of, of shipment data. And I've been very interested in trying to map the, uh, the, the transport flows. Um, and, and so I'm trying to learn how to do that as part of this, um, you know, the, being part of this book club. So it's nice to meet everybody. I see a few familiar names. Um, so we'll continue on. Thank you.
Hey, y'all, I could jump in. Uh, Tony Voda from uh, Long Island, New York. Um, I am a uh, um, utility engineer, electrical engineer. I work a lot with, uh, with GIS. Um, my goal um, is to learn a little bit more about the uh, open source uh, tools. Uh, I, I use a lot of, um, you know, Esri tools in, in my uh, work environment. And I want to learn more about uh, QGIS and uh, using open source and, and using R and, um, you know, integrating them through some, you know, through some programming. So I just stumbled upon this uh, a day or two ago. I just uh, jumped in for the, so the first session was starting up and um, haven't really had a chance to uh, peruse the book, but it does look, uh, you know, very beneficial for what I'm looking to learn. And I think there was a question about how many holes does a straw have? <laughs> uh, one long one, I'll go with. <laughs> Thanks all, nice to meet you. I guess uh, I'll jump in. Uh, my name is Jim Grumman. I live in the uh, in the Chicago area. I work for a, a, a say a heavy equipment manufacturer. Um, kind of in an IT role right now. I found myself um, um, setting up environments for analysts and data scientists. Um, uh, we have other tools. Some mentioned here for. Um, uh, like agricultural use cases, looking at at uh, different sorts of maps, but I'd like to uh, to get a better baseline of uh, maybe the right way of doing these things. And and so I'm I'm interested in um, um, in reading this book. This is I don't know my fourth or fifth book club, so I I do like this sort of format. It forces me to get through the chapters and come prepared. So. I'm really looking forward to doing this with 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 you all. I think it's a it's a great uh, forum. Hi all, my name is Derek Solberger. I am a data science instructor at a university in the middle of California, Western United States. As a hobby, I dabble in GIS, mostly in R, sometimes in ArcGIS. And like others, I'm looking to make learn more about the workflow, trying to be up to date on the technologies. And I think a straw has one hole. First. Uh, I, I will say like, it's fine if you do not want also like to allow the camera uh and uh, like everyone like maybe is not necessarily comfortable with that but i'm waiting for maybe uh binayu and kelly can you just do a few words if you don't want to chat you can just like chat it in the chat say uh, hi as you like hi i can go um my name is kelly bowles i am a phd candidate at a university in california um i do some other um data science work uh but i am sort of new in the spatial data world and want to use it for my dissertation um i had already purchased this book and was making my way through it when i saw um this book club this is my first book club um but i am do have some experience with qgis and am very experienced in r um, my phd minor is data science so Looking forward to this new experience and learning with you all. Okay, I'll go next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhimanyu Arora, and I'm uh, joining from Bangalore, South India, where it's about 6.30 a.m. And uh, I work for the Indian uh, Census Bureau, and I plan to do a PhD very soon. And spatial data analysis is one of the subjects uh, which I really like. And uh, I think that uh, geocomputation with R, Robin Lovelace's book uh, is the is the is the primary you know reference in when we start with spatial data analysis. So I really look forward to learning with you all. Thank you.
Mavi, do you want to go? Yes, I think I can go next. Um, well, my name is um, Maybe. <laughs> yes, my name is it's like that. <laughs> and I'm from Peru. Uh, I was studying a master um, in civil engineer, and I was using the computations for um, making part of my thesis. And but I most most of the time I was using uh, Python and GeoPy and most of the packages related to, to that. And I would like to understand and go deeper in understanding how um, how the the geocomputation is made in in R. Welcome. Yeah, I have seen Alwafemi try to log. Alwafemi, can you? You were just joining on the presentation. I know it's probably very early for you also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good morning. I think uh, I'm Alwafemi. I think we have done uh, the same book club on Joe Elton, also our package. I'm joining from uh, Nigeria. I think I've done a book club on June Elts and our package uh, with Oliver Leroy. So I am looking forward uh, to learning more on uh, geospatial analysis with this book club. And I, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, so if other people join, like we can stop. I will read. Uh, well, um, I think like, uh, we have like a lot of different kind of perspective, which I think is good. So uh, everyone can like share the experience and uh, it will be like fruitful, I think. And um, the first chapters, I was like, um, I think it's not fully right, but I will still uh, share uh, what my take on it. So let's go back, share screen. Okay. Um, uh, as you may know, and you will discover, all is a huge nightmare in GIS in vector format. <laughs> but uh, I hope you will not, and, and uh, one day I discover the trouble. <laughs> okay, so the book club is really like to start with the learning objective of every chapter. So I will try to provide some, even if these chapters is more open than the rest. Um, the first is like learning a bit about the history of spatial in air. I quoted because this is a sentences that's from Roger Bivens. Also, feel free to correct my English in GitHub issue and whatever else if you if you see typo. I'm still very bad at it. Um, and uh, learning the history, a bit of the ecosystem, the upstream. Where um, I will just bring it. Um, the, there will come uh, later and more chapters. I think the chapter uh, five, and if I'm correct, the chapter uh, um, on eight will bring more like uh, what are the upstream dependency. By that, I mean what are like the library of C, usually C++, that's um, air dependent. And um, so we'll learn about that. We'll navigate terms like geocomputation, what geocomputations mean, what's different between GIS and by GIS, do we mean geographical information science? Do we mean geographical information system? We have a lot of terms. And currently, like the new ones training is like spatial data science, geospatial uh, data science. We have a lot of terms that We'll, take, we'll see what the authors think and we can discuss them a bit. Um, outside of semantic, what this, this term like can help us understand the, the, what are the different practices, I will say. Well, consider the advantage of using a CLI stand for common line interface. Uh, so this book uh, focus heavily on it instead of uh, a graphical user interface um, and what could be the advantage and some disadvantage because there are some and then consider the advantage of R inside of this use of common line interface tool. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Roger, Roger Bivan, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, 
that's him like point the what's what does it mean doing special in R? And well, Roger Biden is pretty famous, he's gonna retire soon. Uh, he was the author of the first book of applied special data analysis in R in 2008. Uh, he's like a, a huge dinosaur in the communities. No offense with dinosaur and Roger, <laughs> but he's, he has right ton of package. Uh, you know the in and out of a ton of uh, GIS stuff, and so he is 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 right like the forward of the first uh, definition is usually when he says something I listen. So he said like what's doing special in R is being broad first. Like it's not just uh, it's focusing on broader approach. Uh, interdisciplinarity and uh, other communities. It also means doing working with open source code. That's um, so you can share it with students. Uh, people can share it with each other on the planet and uh, we can all progress. It's also work with open data because um, so you can for the same reason share it. That's mean basically like the code is uh, improved the reproducibility, which is a huge concern in science. But um, so it's reproducibility between team, but you can also see that as reproducibility between yourself from one treatment, you are doing one day to another, doing another day. And uh, it means also a learning from similar community around open source GIS. We are gonna focus on R, but there are people who are trying to develop open source uh, codes in Python in Julia, in Rust, and other language. And so uh, I think, and this is also like translated by Robin and Jakub trying to open the community to other languages. That's why like they changed the name to GeoConf X. So the goal is not like just focus. I mean, we'll focus on R, but we'll focus on tools that hopefully will be able to plug in other language. And um, like, it's not a language war, like, uh, People who are working out to make package available in other lang uh, language like Python, like for example, the, the yeah, the people that behind Rust.io or all the other Python package, like they're working out, they make their work, their their job for available for others. And the uh, open source community should be like uh, listening to their problem because maybe we can learn from them and trying to solve them together. I think this is an important point, learning from similar communities around open source GIS. Uh, and I, I distinguish this part in the, um, the first part of uh, Roger because like uh, he asked also the reader to engage with the author and the wider aerospatial community. You are not alone. You can ask questions uh, as well in the, um, in the Slack chat of Air for Data Science, in the Discord of Geocomputation with our, uh, no, and uh, air, air, the mailing list air, uh, S I G G O, uh, that still uh, work. And, and he encouraged you to build your own workflow. I think this is where, like, this kind of geocomputation uh, shine is like you will be able to adapt the tool you need to your uh, problems, to solve your problems. And it will become your workflow. And finally, while doing that, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, if you have like, if you want to interrupt me, discuss something. Uh, I, I really think like uh, the open, the GIS world is small and uh, yeah, we should help each other. Okay, so now we have the preface. What the book uh, target audience is, is from GIS professional or specialist, um, um, the, from specialist to use R, like classical user R, like I'm using the use R not as a, uh, like I think this is Jenny Bryan that used it a lot also from the um, I think she worked for Posit now. That's basically like the simple user of R that just want to improve. But the book is uh, target a very wide audience. Um, you will still need to be a bit like it's saying intermediate to advanced R user. I still or I still think you can manage if you are a beginner, but it will be a bit harder. Book that they recommend is. For example, the Air for Data Science book from Adley Wickham. I can post the link on the chat uh, later. Oh, no, it's easy to find. And you can also find the book club about it in the <laughs> Air for Data Science. Uh, even if you not, I will guess like for this book club, you will be fine. Uh, we'll try to help each other. The book has three parts. Uh, one's focus on foundation, except the introduction, I will say. 
uh, that's uh, nearly half of the book. And then you have a book that's built on this foundation to go on more specific topic. That's called extension. That will be like mapping, doing map. Um, Air is well known for being able to interface with other uh, software and languages. So you will see that here. And then uh, concrete application in the in various field, mostly environmental science, uh, transport, uh, transportation, and geomarketing. Uh, each chapter has exercise with a companion website. You can find it easily if you have trouble. Uh, so you can you will have the answer somewhere. And if you have trouble um, finding it, like ask. Okay. What is your computation? I, oh, I, I miss a T here. So see a typo, a typo. Uh, daughter uh, made you reference to Stan Openshaw for people who do not know him. Uh, he was a geographer, I think in Lancaster or Leeds and in UK. Uh, he died recently, not too far, like something like 10 years ago. And uh, he, he was young, he was 60 something. So um, <clears throat> it was kind of a shock. Uh, it was famous, uh, well, for bringing the idea of geocomputation, but also he worked with a, a lot uh, with a problem in geography and demography or regional uh, economy. That's called the MOP. That's an abbreviation for a modifiable area unit problem. You know, when you, you call something on the surfaces uh, and if you change the surfaces, like everything behind it could change, like the, your coefficient, uh, correlation coefficient and stuff like that. Uh, it's also known sometimes as a support issue, but if, well, is no for that. Um, and he defined your computation fairly recently at the end of the nineties, uh, saying like it was like, it's about using very different type of geodata, which is, a, um, we will see very few kind of uh, data structures. Usually it's more deal with geo, what we call geoinformatic, like a, a sub-discipline that's focused on the structures of the data with special attributes. Um, so it uses some kind of geodata uh, and uh, develop relevant geo tools. So it's building something concrete, uh, but with kind of the idea of a scientific approach, which is put into quote here. From this definition, Robin, Jakub, and Janes, uh, Janes, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, uh, have increased a bit. And it, for them, it's working with geographic data in a computational way. So uh, focusing on code, reproducibility, and modularity. And uh, I think we'll see plenty of examples. Like this book by himself is an example. Everything in his book can be reproducible. Uh, even like, for example, if you see, for example, like, uh, this graph here. Uh, if I go uh, inside of the repository, uh, well, let's view uh, source. And yeah, I'm, I'm on the, the page that generate this website. I mean, there's other stuff, but like, and where is it? Um, so this is, so here, I will argue that it's not fully reproducible because this is a, a, <laughs> a PNG. So we should bother them right uh, for us for the code here. So then uh, all, all this PNG was generated, but usually uh, even when it's a PNG that are generated, they will use like, um, and it's a, it's a good way like when you are reading the book also to go directly in the cells. So you can see sometime like you will see like the comments of uh, of Robin or Jakub, um, is, is this next sentence still valid? And it's it's interesting to see how they work also. So not everything is reproducible in this book. Okay, let's go back to the, but they try the hardest they can, I, I feel. Um, it's part of geography in the sense that it's expanding the tool used in geography. So they bring Humboldt, for people who do not know him, he was like, I think a German explorer uh, from the 18th centuries who basically like uh, worked in the Andes region um, uh, and was like the beginner of what we call now ecology or plant geography. And uh, he, he used it like, he was like a precursor of using like compass and uh, a lot of uh, tools that were new at this time 
to to describe the world. So the idea of the computation is still describing the world, but the tool has expanded. Um, on the semantic part, like I, I like the or you have differences, like for example, as what I said, like in geoinformatics, for example, like at the Pedsma, uh, the the, the maintainers of um, of the SF package is the geoinformatician. It focuses a lot on on the the aspect of data structures. Uh, in France and Germany, we use geomatics to in kind of the same way of geoinformatics, but it's just different. Also, feel a bit different communities behind it. And then if the, this this all um, terminology have differences. They have way more overlap than differences. So uh, this is the author take. We can make a break here and like, do you what? What's your point of that? Like, would you prefer use special data science? Like, for example, uh, there will be a book from uh, Roger Bivens and uh, Edza Pedsma, which be, which is called Special Data Science with R. Or will you will you prefer? I mean, the author also, I would like to say, like the author uh, make a distinction between classical GIS uh, by the fact that uh, with your computation, you are going to use uh, the common line interface, even if R is an interpreted language. Uh, so that's why like, they also like the term geocomputation. On my part, uh, I like also it because not everything we do is necessarily related with data science or it predates data science. Um, you can do, for example, a, a routing engine. Let's say like you ask Google Map to bring you like from A to B. You're gonna use like a routing engine. Is it data science? It was like existed before. If you are gonna use like, for example, watershed, if you use raster data to calculate uh, a watershed um, or doing basically what we call math algebra or waster algebra, um, is it data science? Difficult to say, but it's definitely your computation. It's trying to solve the issue with data structures, specific one, and a specific algorithm, and try to make it reproducible. That's my take. But yeah, do you have like reaction with that? It's one of the question of it's one of the exercises at the end of this chapter. <laughs> Who want to go? It's fine if you don't. I can, I can continue. OK, I'm continuing. Anyway, I do not think it matters too much. <laughs> OK, why R? The first point they bring is like the common line versus the graphical interface. The common line interface is faster than a graphical interface. I agree. <laughs> and uh, I will try a small example. Uh, with a broadband analyst, uh, people from the US probably are aware, like uh, the Biden administration, like provide a lot of money to bring uh, a good internet all over America. So you have currently a lot of broadband analysts that are checking the, um, the federal data on what's uh, the quality of internet in every place in America. I work with some of them, and this is one of the examples that it's currently like the current workflow. They download data from the government agency from a web browsers, and usually you have to to click to to survive that. Um, they check the data in QGIS. Usually, that's basically like the eyeball data, check if it's correct or not. And to be, they can correct them. Uh, this is one I think this is one of the deep art part doing in R or every um, uh, command line tools correcting uh, geometries. Um, and changing geometries um, manually is not easy to do. It is possible, but it's it's not great in R or every language. So in this case, I still think like going through QGIS or ArcGIS or Manifold or whatever you are using, I'm not uh, against any. I, I, I use QGIS uh, personally, but uh, ArcGIS is definitely a fine product. Um, and uh, except it's not open source, but yeah. And uh, you, first, they need to transform it to an appropriate uh, coordinate reference system. Uh, I, I'm just not going to the detail, but like the data is in what we call WGS84, which is in latitude longitude, 
which is not uh, easy to handle a buffer, which is they want to do. They want to create a buffer, an area around these networks to know where uh, the various stuff about the availability of the broadband. So for doing this buffer, they need to transform to an appropriate uh, CRS, create the buffer, then they need to transform the buffer to the previous CRS, and then send it back to uh, the data to the Gov agency for various uh, needs. I, I, I'm just uh, pitching you like it's uh, a, a quick example like how you can do that with R. I did it, and so data could be directly downloaded from the government agency, but the government agency usually have very difficult website to scrape. They change all the time. <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult to request them, at least in the US, but from France, I know also this is like six months you build something and six months later, um, they provide you a different kind of API or they just change the file name or so you basically like, for my experience, a lot of time it's better than loading by hand instead of using like a, a, a tool that do it for you in R or in other languages. Uh, so let's say like we still have to use the web browser to download the data. You can pretty easily read the data like that. Uh, you can provide MapView is a package. Uh, so um, when I said like I use it like an imperative style, it's like I, I could have that make that in one line. It will be like totally unreadable and hard to uh, debug, but it's possible. So I just like this make one line basically for every step, but it could have been shortcutted. Uh, map view is a it's a great uh, package. We'll see that allow us like basically to uh, use leaflets to plot the data in leaflets. Uh, for that, the data need to be also in a latitude and longitude for map view. That's a requirement for leaflet. You can easily transform it in the UTM. I, I take a random UTM. I, so the data does not exist, but it's a UTM. I think work for uh, the US UTM. Is uh, some uh, particular car of a uh, coordinate represent uh, CR a coordinate reference system that um, is uh, it's a planar uh, coordinate one. You create a buffer. Yeah, I create a small buffer like 500 meters just, and uh, then you transform it back, and then uh, I miss a step where I will convert this data uh, that I could be directly sent with R like R uh, can post data to the web. Uh, but you probably be safer to write it to the disk than send it via the web browser. So it's two different kind of workflow. Both are their pros and cons, but we're gonna focus way more on this one on this book. The, this code um, is fully reproducible. If like we bring me the data or even another kind of data that's similar, I will be able to reproduce it. That's one of the big advantages. I did not collect the. the the, the spaces here. One of the other examples like the, the, the author bring is that the ID currently, uh, the volume, the velocity, and if I want to be like kind of obvious, I will add the variety of the data currently. So that's basically some what's currently people try to call big data. Uh, I've like tremendously increased the, the past years. Like sense to GPS, which basically did not exist before 2000 or the even if they existed, uh, I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, American friends, but I think it was Bill Clinton who removed the noise uh, from the GPS because GPS was something um, from the military use first, and uh, civil used were about to use it, but it was noisy, uh, and I think it was Clinton who removed it. And the first GPS was very, fairly easy, and you need to charge them a lot. I remember uh, I'm not that old, but still old enough to have been carrying them <laughs> on the field. And uh, now you have it in the smartphone. Um, you have also like incredible uh, number of data that coming from drone, or just uh, automatic, automatic uh, autonomous car, or just car. Currently, I know I play I play car with a. With a, an engineer uh, that's worked for a big car company that I will not name, and he's in charge of collecting huge data that's been sent by by our cars, um, what they cap from their bio sensors. So you collect a lot of data, and this data is now available, and uh, it's start to be challenging using graphical user interface for them. Uh, this is a quote for uh, Dirk Ed Butel: uh, "Interface to other software are part of 
L was built uh, on a way that's make it simple to interface with other languages. So here are two examples of package, LCPP, which is an interface with C++, which is a, um, a language that needs to be compiled. And Reticulate is a package uh, that was developed to interface uh, with Python. So all of that make a lot of flexibility. Uh, like the way to handle other um, languages, uh, the modularity of it make it very flexible. And that's why you can create the workflow that you need. Um, that's why, for example, in my experience, when I was a PhD student and before a master's student, uh, what I was doing was not available in uh, uh, an S3 product or uh, QGIS was still uh, not even version two. So uh, R was needed and we needed to build from scratch. Uh, also, it have gradual special statistics. Uh, which uh, you can add Python have different one. Uh, obviously, Python have a way better um, ecosystem for machine learning. Um, but uh, it errors probably close on the machine learning. And you have, like, for example, uh, inline is not available in Python. And it's, all, and it's a fairly uh, relevant in the spatial world. OK. Uh, What's important here uh, and why we use software for geocomputation, still have trouble with my T here. Um, you can use R and Python, both are interpreted language. That's mean like you do not need to compile the code to transfer it to binary. You can type it into the console, ask R and it will produce a result. It will not need to compile it to binary to run the program like C or Java. And so you <laughs> do not need a compiler, which is, uh, people from computer science will uh, can expand on that, but can be difficult, uh, especially with C, uh, because you have more than one compilers. And also, you need to build for more than one operating system, which is not necessarily the, all the problem. Uh, so, you can basically, like the code that I have written before, uh, here, you can write it, uh, like just send it to the, the, the 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 r r and uh, the it will you will have the results directly print which is uh what which is called like uh, a read eval print loop uh, r e p l which make it easy for the analyst and also like uh, for learning uh other good languages uh that could be used well c plus plus like a lot of open source tools we are building on top of c and c plus plus uh, QGIS uh, have a lot of C++, even if you know, currently it have a lot of Python. Uh, Grass, which was built by, um, um, I think, the American Survey Corp. Uh, uh, and the Army then was, the, uh, was uh, oh, the Army provide, uh, let it be open source, I think, at the end of the 2000, the, the, at the end of the 90s. Saga, it's another one also. All of them are built in C and C++. And uh, so learning C and C++ is a plus also, I guess. Java, Java is, uh, was way more popular like 10 years ago. Uh, if you are like doing like some web servers, uh, a lot of them uh, like GeoNode and GeoServers are built in Java. Uh, GTS, which stands for Java Topological, uh, I do not remember the S. Uh, so put it in the chat or obviously. <laughs> Which was basically like um, doing uh, all the mathematical topological relation. Uh, at be before Geos, which is we will see in this book, which is the C library that um, use a lot of vector operation, uh, like the special predicate, like what intersect with uh, something. This is done by at the upstream is done by Geos and Geos. Uh, is a part of this uh, Java library. Python, well, a lot of API can be used to call algorithms in QGIS or ArcMap. You have like PyArc, I think the S3 version of, um, of Python that's uh, useful for um, uh, inter interacting with uh, S3 world, I guess. And uh, a lot of other tools are built in Python. So Python is a good language also. I mean, all of them are good language. Uh, and all of them also, I think, are supported by people uh, that want to like do stuff. I mean, 
this is the part like where I feel the this the so the book is still under construction. I feel now they will probably mention Rust and uh, other uh, new trendy um, language. But R is fine, and you know, like SQL, I've been here for uh, for pretty long time, and it's not well people are if it's a language or not. But R will be also here for a long time, like C. <laughs> Um, our special ecosystem, we'll go deeper into that. I didn't want to go too far into it. Um, basically, you have two groups of development, which kind of uh, be confusing with the beginners. Like you have one that you can see in rspatial.org. And obviously the second one is by R, but not with the minus sign, without the minus sign else. So the first one is basically like uh, SF, which uh, is, a, is an evolution of the SP package. When I uh, write like this curly bracket, I basically want to mean the package. So, uh, and we will go next into the history of its letters. And so uh, at the beginning, it was the SP package that uh, use a very weird uh, way of R, it was the S4 uh, object. So it's, it's an object oriented package. That have been built now into simple features, which is also use simple features, the SF package, the author, I mean, this is just, do, I mean, we'll go clarify everything uh, later. But yeah, it's just the important part is like, you can form most of the raster stuff have been developed on the air spatial style. And let's say to simplify, most of the uh, vector have been developed on the, the SF side now. Uh, it's still not totally true. You can do perfectly fine vector op uh, operation with Terra and uh, Inside of SF, you have star, which is another package that's deal with what we call um, data cubes. But that's another topic. So you have two groups of developments. Why is probably, we should probably ask them. Uh, it does not matter too much. Usually you can interact with them and convert from one to one fairly easily. But it can be disturbing for newcomers. Uh, the history of our special, like there is very good tool of, of Roger Biden, if you are interested on it, like uh, it go back way before the 90s uh, because he learned it in the 70s. And uh, it, I think it's very interesting tool because uh, he was explaining at the beginning, I do not remember what they were using in the 70s, which kind of tool, but uh, very few people have it and the community were way more open sharing uh, their scripts. Uh, the community, the, um, the, what's make uh, basically like at the beginning of the 90s, uh, it was like at the moment uh, where people, it was harder to share script because you have more operating system and uh, it was harder to share them. And then you started to have like private companies and uh, license um, data format, everything like that. So if you are interested in do the history of not only a special, but also like, doing compute, uh, special computation. Um, I should put some link of uh, Roger Biden uh, going and telling his point of view. I think there are other people who are like very interesting. I, I think of Luke Anslin, which I think is professor in Chicago. I don't know which university, but yeah, you have few people still alive. <laughs> they, are not that, they are not that old, but that, have, that know like this history from end. But let's go back like in the book, they start in the nineties. People are exchanging uh, S script, S is, uh, to, is like the ancestor of R. Uh, and at the 2000, you start to have R package for special methods that deal with point patterns. Uh, point patterns trying to understand why uh, data are organized that way. You have point and why is it organized that way? Let's say like you have trees some places, why some of them are closer to other, why other trying to be farther. Geostatistics is another field uh, was mostly uh, used in the, um, uh, what do you call that? Petrol, uh, primary uh, minerals, everything like that. And um, exploratory data in 2008, I put it uh, a high note because like it was the first edition of applied special data analysis. Uh, this basically saved my PhD. Uh, it's a very good book. But it was very hard to read, <laughs> and it didn't work as well. 
uh, on everything. It was, uh, but still, and um, it, it's it basically explained package that have been developed on 2003 and 2005 with SP, which was the first implementation uh, of doing uh, special stuff with R, uh, which was 2005 and 2003 was Ergidal with uh, Erg, oh, the old school uh, said good old, uh, but uh, the, the new kids say Jidal, uh, so you pronounce it as you as you will. But it's basically like a C, um, uh, a C implementation and C++ implementations that do import outputs of various uh, data formats. Uh, we can go into G, uh, let's go into it. Uh, if you do not know, you should know it. Uh, so if you use uh, yeah, GDAL documentation, So pa, 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 pa. it have every it have a lot of driver from raster. It started on raster uh, before, and uh, so this is all. Uh, we are very good at inventing drivers and uh, data structures, and we are still doing it. So it it deal with a lot of different kind of. Uh, and I remember when I was like a master, we needed like to go to one computers that have like the proprietary like let's say like the Arc Info binary grid transform it with a proprietary tool to another format to use another software to use. So uh, GDAL was like uh, very uh, needed. So it also like have a lot of um, a vector drivers. So it's basically a library of libraries that deal with converting uh, data structures. So it's very, it's, uh, it's used by uh, behind the scene with SF when you, for example, want to read a shape file. Okay. So I, uh, this is like a very important. So the interface of it is just a wrapper was uh, right in like 18 years ago. 2008 uh, was the beginning of Google Map. You have an air, air way of interacting with it. And uh, you have also ggmap, which was also like um, a way to use ggplot and have a base map, just a, a, a raster that you, a PNG, you don't let it a PNG that you put behind your map and doing some uh, and it have evolved tremendously since that, but it's good to 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 remember that. And 2010, uh, RGOS was developed, which is like um, so a wrapper of the GeoS library, which is also used, for example, with PostGIS uh, and QGIS. Uh, I think uh, ArcGIS have their own implementation, uh, but I could be wrong. So I know they have their own implementation on uh, Proj, but I do not know if they have. Anyway, and this is the beginning of the raster of package also. Uh, 2018, uh, we have what we call a breaking chain with Proj, which is a, a breaking chain is a change that does not allow uh, backward compatibility. So if you work at a uh, code with Proj, uh, the package, um, I mean, the, the upstream library of C, uh, it, it's, it's, it's uh, used to work with what we call Proj string or Proj for string. Uh, I don't know if you see what it's mean. It's something like that. Proj string. Let's go see one of them. Do we see one of them quickly? Do I will? Uh, oh, pages. Let's see what this. It will probably give us like at least one. Uh, where is it? Where is, where is, it? Where is it? Uh, Proj? Do we have an example of it? I want an example of it. Yeah. So it was. Uh, like the, they give you like the k value it, it was basically a line of text with k uh, value for example parameters and a value it was like plus a equals something or uh, is it like so it was just a string uh, it's basically like it live in the prg file in a shape file but i want just an example does it provide us yeah do you have an example of a pro string so it works that like it's fairly easy to parse for a computer they know like something starts with plus then that's something that but uh, for some reason, they moved from uh, this representation to a new one, which called well, no text. So it was uh, well, it was a mess for a few years, and now I think like it's way way easier. And uh, inside of the R package, the SF package have integrated this change, and the Terra package have integrated this change. And but the SP package, I do not know. I still still think, but good question. Uh, and also, we have seen recently huge increase in uh, data visualization package. You have GG Animate, which uh, make animate map. You have Ray Shader, which is a very an older reverse. It's developed by one guy, uh, I think, in Washington, and is, is very prolific. 
and this is very all the cool uh, 3D uh, visualization you see is usually developed with this package. Tmap, which is a, a thematic map package, map view, uh, which is like a, a quick interface to leaflets so you can plot uh, data on leaflets and map SF. So whew, uh, I've done it. <laughs> Later uh, on these pages, uh, the video will be recorded, but like I would like you to like, um, let's say um, we can discuss a bit. Do you have questions? Do you want to go back? I, if you are interested in the history, feel free like to, uh, I can share some link uh, and in the chat, I will think of doing it later or in the Slack, maybe it's better. In the Slack, it's probably better. From the air ecosystem, uh, you have also a fairly good post into the air social, I think. Uh, uh, will I be able to find it? Well, they, they keep us like, uh, evolved on on the various evolution but i do not remember the it's so i i think about network people who are dealing with uh, with infrastructure will probably our flow will probably have to deal with network because this is a one of the way to represent them do i have this post on um no i do not think about it anyway i will find it letters the but yeah, so I will stop sharing and go ahead. So it's the first chapters, and we should have a presenter for the next one. Oh, there's something in the chat. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Sweet. Thank you. So you're looking for a volunteer next week? Yeah. Um, it's a long chapter, I <laughs> think. So I can go, we can go like if you go to the Slack. And mm -hmm. you go on top of the. Um, I, I'm go, I'm saying that like, do you want people to share uh, me to share my screen or is it good? I've got it. I'm forked. I'll uh, okay. look for the spread, spreadsheet. Perfect. Volunteer cohort one. Yeah. Services. So I'm going to go on it too. And I will post the link on chat also. Okay. Yeah. Not this one. Volunteer to present here. Uh, I want also to be clear like uh, here, uh, this presentation involved using Markdown and Air Markdown and the book done package. If you feel unconfident about them and just want to use a PowerPoint, it's fine with me. Like, I don't not want that to be like something like that. Uh, or even if you just want to, you know, just go like through copy paste code uh, from whatever you want to use, that's also fine with me. Like the, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's if it helpful or not, but um, so this is the link of the spreadsheets. Yeah. I'm going forward Mac and Linux. And uh, that mess up the control C, control V in my head, uh, in my mind. <clears throat> so question, should I ask you a question? <laughs> we have like, let's say we can stay a bit more. So next week we will go more into the code. We'll dive away to his, like, yeah, it was like, I should maybe have skipped this one and go back later into it. Does it feel like what you expected? Do you? Oh, good. Okay. I'm still excited. <laughs> okay, good. And, and next week is chapter two? Yep. All right. So sh chapter two is built as an introduction and uh, it's kind of showing the hello world of it, but it's where uh, you can do already pretty powerful stuff with just basic um, hello world, I feel. Because you have a lot of data into our package. That's uh, just, you, you can just easily pull them. Uh, that's good if Jim, like you, you will be able like to, to be next week that you, because like, um, if you want to update, it's built like a package, you probably know how on our package work. So you need to add the dependency. So you, Figure out. Perfect. I'll volunteer for something. 
Uh, yeah. No, I like don't I know said, about next week. <laughs> oh, okay. Do we have someone? Like, if if we do not have anyone, I will be the one doing it. But like, I, I think it's it's valuable to present. And even if you have trouble, you know, and if you have difficulty, uh, other will have too. Okay. I'll I'll look. See you in the chat. Okay. See you. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye, have... everybody. Okay. So no one want to volunteer now. Well, we have a week. I will post on Friday. And if no one like says something, I can do the second one. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, bye everyone. And feel free like if you have questions to go in the chat. Bye everyone. Bye -bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.